1991, birds and people are living together in seemingly perfect harmony, until one day, a young man catches fire. This is Phoenix. Birds and people are living together in seemingly perfect harmony.
Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Game Week 34 knee jerk stream. We only have five game weeks left. I'm going to have to uh, change the graphics on the videos this week with this, no more six game weeks, basically. I'll have to change it one. Uh, sorry, can't get my words out. You know what I mean, right? On the graphics, I'll have to just downgrade one week at a time. Anyway, not that interesting. Hope you're all doing well. Lots to talk about. Um, Man City have basically won the league. Arsenal Liverpool, it's over, unfortunately. Um, Bradley, terrible again. Double game week this week, of course. Lots of people free hitting. I'm on a red arrow. Um, I was on a red arrow even before Leon Bailey scored against my double Arsenal defence. And I'm on even bigger red arrow. I think I'm about 32k, so I've dropped from 24k to 32k. So it hasn't been great. Darwin Nunez minutes not looking good either. But at least we're dead ending this week, or at least I am, and then I'm going to wild card. So hopefully it gets better from here. Annoyingly, the people that are on free hit 34 are probably doing quite well because they don't have Arsenal and Liverpool players, or at least not triple ups probably. They've got the likes of Gordon and Izak who are absolutely smashing it. So just goes to show, free hit is not always about the week you use it in. Sometimes it's in the weeks outside of that. I was just hoping that triple Arsenal and triple Liverpool would have done a lot better than it has. Like, Salah has been terrible since I bought him in. Absolutely terrible. And in the meantime, I've sold Bruno Fernandes. The guy can't stop scoring. He scored three games in a row. Is it Trent time? It may well be. I, I don't think that the plan was to give him that many minutes. He only came on because obviously Bradley got injured. But the fact that Bradley is now injured and he is the backup, we don't yet know what's wrong with him. He may end up being fine, but Klopp said... We'll have to wait and see if his ligament damage. His Trent's minutes are probably going to be quite good, but it doesn't guarantee two starts in the double. Gomez could still play right back and Robertson left back, so it's not a guarantee. But if Trent was benched against Atalanta and given like another 20, 25 minutes off the bench, I might punt him for the double. I might just go for it instead of Van Dyke. Because my plan, I got two free transfers, so my current plans are Son to Eze. And then Bradley to Van Dyke, but I could easily just go Trent instead. I think that's now an option. But yeah, Dean Henderson, great. Glad I bought him in this week. Shame that I benched him. People that didn't wild card in 30 are doing pe better than people that did. Yeah, possibly. I mean, overall, it's probably been fine, but this week in particular, free hit 34 is probably looking quite good because a lot of people would have sold Liverpool and Arsenal players for though uh, to, to players with a double game week in 37. Like I said time and time again, I would have done Darwin to Isaac this week. That's done really well. Uh, Elise over Eze, not for me. I think Eze is probably the penalty taker. His minutes have been good. He's not just back from injury. I think Elise is a nice punt, though. If I was on free hit, I'd be looking at the double up, I think. Why not play Zabani and sell Haaland to get 11 doublers? Well, there's no point in playing Zabani, I don't think. I mean, I could play Zabani and sell Haaland. You're right, but I don't really want to. I, I think it's better to not play Zamani and not sell Haaland than it is to do it the other way around. If that makes sense. I just don't see Bournemouth getting a clean sheet in this double. Went differential on Palmer captaincy. Very well, could be nice. Obviously Haaland did really well. Well, did well enough. 10 points. 42 points so far with Palmer and Gusto to play. That's a pretty good position to be in, yeah? Allison is... Allison wasn't bad today. Was he? Oh, Allison was fine. Made a really good save as well. What percentage chance you captain Eze? Zero. I'm going to captain Salah. I wildcarded in 30 and bought Isaac, Gordon, and Cher. Looking pretty good. Yeah, happy days. Uh, it's two Liverpool, two Arsenal, and Eze the best midfield for free hit 34. Um, I would... No, I'd probably go Eze, Elise, Salah, Saka, maybe Diaz in a 3-5-2, something like that. Your bench boost 34 is looking juicy. I'm not going to bench boost. I, I could, I'm close to bench boost. My bench is Neto, Zamani, double Bournemouth defense, and then Palmer and Doughty. I don't think it's a terrible bench boost, but I think I'm just going to go all in on wildcard 35, bench boost 37 now. Get rid of all my Arsenal, apart from maybe Gabriel. Get rid of all my Liverpool and just go for it and hope for the best. I'm definitely getting Isaac in game week 35. I'll probably get Gordon as well. I know we still have European games to see, but after today's games, could you please order all of Arsenal and Liverpool attackers for the double game week, best to worst? I'm not going to go through literally every one, but, well, most of them, I guess. Uh, I would say Salah, Diaz, 
Darwin Jota. Only Darwin ahead of Jota still, just because Jota's building up fitness. But honestly, it might be the other way around. Darwin hasn't been great the last couple of games. The thing is, though, Darwin wasn't great today, and he did miss some sitters, or at least one. But so did Salah and Jota. And yet Darwin's the one that gets all the pelters. Like Jota and Salah should have scored today, too. Um, and then for Arsenal, Saka, Odegaard. No, Saka Havertz, Odegaard, I think. And there's not really anyone else that I would buy. I mean, Jesus is getting a lot of minutes at the moment, but I think he'd just be frustrating to have. I kept Barkley since game week 25. I finally sell him and he scores against City. Yeah, I was loving that because of the wipeout. And then Vardial, who a few people, I think he's about 10, 15% ownership in, in the top 10k or, or overall, goes and gets a, an assist in goal. Oh, no way is the league won just yet. Like, as I said to people earlier, like, it's not literally over the league, but it's over. It's basically over. Who are Man City going to lose against? Like, Brighton away. Brighton from last year might have made it tricky for Man City, but the way they're playing at the moment, I just don't see it. So Spurs, possibly. Spurs is maybe the game where Man City could drop points. But here's the thing. Do you see Liverpool and Arsenal going the whole way now and not losing the game? Because that's kind of what you're up against against Man City. If Man City lose, Liverpool and Arsenal need to win every game. And I just don't see that. So I suspect that City will just win it. I, I mean, it's probably always been City, really, even though it's been so close. Like, City were the ones that most of us expected to eventually go and win. That, that, that could happen. I, I, like, I know people say that it's not over. Of course it's not literally over, right? It can, it's still mathematically possible for Arsenal and Liverpool to win the league, but it's over. It's over. Uh, Darwin is comfortably behind Cunha, Solanke, and Mateta in my view on free hit 34. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't go Darwin now. I wouldn't buy Jota either. Diaz I would go for if you're going for another Liverpool player. Uh, best game week 34 keeper, Raya. But then is he the best of the three Arsenal options? Probably not. So I'd maybe go Henderson, possibly. Allison, maybe. Might go massive differential on wildcard 35. I, I feel like wildcard 35 is already quite differential. I mean, selling all your Liverpool and Arsenal players, or most of them, is already... You know, a lot of people are going to... Maybe less people will keep hold of them now because of this week's results, but it doesn't take much to swing people back the other way. If that Spurs that lost 4-0 to Arsenal turn up, then the City score will be nasty. Yeah, I mean, I mean Spurs can't defend that well. <laughs> uh, that's been clear for a long time now. They're not quite as bad as Man United, but they're not great either. I don't know why people go anywhere near Liverpool defenders. They never keep clean sheets. Yeah. I think, uh, honestly, I feel like Liverpool defenders have been a bit unfortunate recently. To, like, to get to get so few people... Like, Bradley, for example. I, I can't believe I've got so few points from him. No, no, if I if I said to you back in game week 25, Conor Bradley's going to play all the way through till game week 33, people would have been predicting way more points than he's had. I'm not, I'm not even talking, like, five clean sheets and three attacking. Just something. This hasn't happened. Given form, do free hit 34 go against effective ownership, Saka, Solanke? I mean, Solanke's pretty good, right? He, he's going to play twice. He's on penalties. You could bet against him. I, I think with Salah, you could go to, like, Havertz instead if you wanted to. I, I don't hate it, but I wouldn't... I get, it's a bit like free hit 29, right? Free hit 34, part of the differential is some of the players you've been able to have already, like Isaac and stuff like that. So... You can go different, of course, and we're getting closer to the end of the season. There's going to be less times to, you know, be differential. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't make your team too much worse than what you think is the best option. Right? If you think Saka's by far and away the best option on free hit, I wouldn't go different. If you think he's okay, then yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's a good time to do it. Should I keep Harlan in free? If I was free hitting, I wouldn't have any single game week players. Bournemouth can't get a penalty to save their life. They almost got one yesterday against Man United. I, I thought that was in, in the box at first. Apparently not. But to be honest, it still looks pretty close on the replays. We have gone six game weeks with the goalkeepers for Liverpool and City. Cost a combined price of 7.5 million. Not anymore. Edison and Allison back in. 
Uh, I wouldn't go Harlan on free hit, no. I, I'd go with Mateta over him, I think. Maybe even Cunha, yeah. Possibly too. Bought in Kibior is my kind of wild card three game weeks ago, and he hasn't started once. I've got two transfers. Should I take him out? Yeah, I would get rid of him. <laughs> He's definitely not nailed for, for Arsenal. Any bets on the golf? I couldn't even tell you who's playing right now. Well, I'm sure like Rory McIlroy maybe is playing, and Tiger Woods, I think, was playing as well. Um... I'm kind of lost outside of that. Do, 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 do. Yeah, the, the, the fake... On a, I know I say this every time, like on the deadline sheet, but the people that create fake FPL accounts to come into street, again, like they're here on Saturday morning, they're here Sunday evening. They obviously don't like FPL or, or streamers, but yet they've got nothing better to do. It's, um, it's quite sad. Uh, Shane Lowry. Okay. Tiger is out. Okay. Shows you what I know. I got no interest in golf, to be honest with you. Uh, three best defenders for three hit 34. I mean, I still think Saliba, Gabriel, and Trent, maybe. I think if Aiden Yuri's fit, he's an option. I think Munoz from Palace is an option as well. Oh, this is an interesting question, actually. Yeah, forgot about this. Thoughts on how people will react to future leaks considering uh, Tony Lazy FPL were wrong about Foden and Stein. I mean, look, I'm sure they weren't trying to be wrong on purpose right that late changes happen uh, i mean we were told De Bruyne was in a squad i think and then that was a late change then Foden this time i just think it is what it is and and next time they have info i'll probably believe it and and most of the time it'll be right but maybe there was a late change the interesting thing is for anyone that watched the deadline stream about a minute before the Foden start thing came out i got a message saying that he wasn't in the team if you remember, and I said at the time, this person has been right before, but they're not maybe Arsenal level of source, because my Arsenal guy that I had before was really good. So I got told Foden wasn't starting, and then the person that told me that sent the team that they thought was going to play, and it was the exact 11 that started the game. So I don't know what happened there. I don't know whether... Everyone else got the info early and that info was wrong and the guy my guy was late. Maybe he just got lucky, I don't know. But I um he told me at ten thirty nine AM that Foden wasn't starting. And at half eleven uh, or before half eleven I think it was, he um sent me the the team that it should be just before half eleven. So I don't know what's going on, but I, I think people are just trying to help, right? So you take it what it is. You know, managers can change their mind. There could be a late fitness test or whatever. So is it annoying? Yeah. But I, I think I'd rather have... Well, I'd rather the leaks weren't a thing at all. I, I'd happily that I never got sent. I'd be happy if I never got sent any and no one had them. But if they're going to be a thing, you'd rather know, right, than not. Who is the best third City player for Wildcard 35? Great question. When you find the answer out, let me know. <laughs> Ruben Diaz, probably, or, or Edison. I don't think I would go for another attacker outside of Harden and Foden right now. Like, but Vardy or Kanji, they, if they get enough minutes. But, like, it's, I think it's impossible to tell you exactly who the best one is. There's lots of options, then you're just hoping for the best. For what it's worth, I don't think any of them, apart from Edison, start every game. And even then, when the league is over, he won't start. It'll be Ortega, if they're still in Europe. Please, can you make a rank chasing free hit 34 draft part of the video? Uh, probably, probably not. <laughs> I don't think, like, how, how different can you really go on free hit? Honestly. Like, I mean, it would basically be pick, pick a load of Sheffield United, Palace, and Wolves players. But even if you wanted to go different for an Arsenal attacker, Havertz has got pretty good ownership at this point. Martinet, Trossard, um, Smith Rowe, etc., just not nailed on enough. You know, Liverpool, you could go for Jota, sure, but he's probably not going to get enough minute. I mean, Jota maybe over over Diaz. I just don't know if there are that many differential. I mean, I'll, I'll slightly, like, Trent's going to have quite low ownership. That's going to be a differential in itself, I think. But also, more people are going to pick him up this week now. So, probably not. I mean, the rank chasing should probably be to get make the team that's going to score the most points. You really want, like, triple Wolves attack? Honestly, like not having Haaland, having a full team of double game week is already 
differential over a lot of people that aren't playing a chip this week. So I just don't think it's worth it. Like Huang instead of Sarabia, maybe. I mean, I wouldn't go for Sarabia on free hit. Uh, cheers, Heros or Heroes. Uh, is Ain't Nuri still a good option for the double? We need to wait and see what's said about him. <laughs> I think um, a few people said to me that, that Gary O'Neill lied about Ain't Nuri, but he didn't. He never confirmed that he was going to be in the squad. Like, he never confirmed he would definitely be in the squad. He said he envisage, envisages him in the squad. And now he says he envisages him. Oh, I can't get that word out. Envisages him being back next week. So we'll have to wait and see for an update closer to the time. Harlan needs to score from open play. He's been disappointed. Yeah, it wasn't that great against Luton again, to be honest with you. I mean, it, the, the underlying numbers are good. I think he had like one XG from open play. But when you watch the game, it didn't feel like that. Didn't, I don't think he was particularly great. Uh, Senesi is a good pick for free hit if the tenure... Look, I don't think Senesi is a good option at all, to be honest. I wouldn't... On a free hit, I wouldn't go for Bournemouth defence. The only the only pl two players I would consider from Bournemouth are Solanke and maybe Clivert. If you want to go differential, put Clivert in your free hit. I don't think he's part of the best 11. He did miss a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, right at the start, right? And then he, <laughs> he got the assist from smashing the ball into the defender's face. There is no way eight Nuri gets 60 plus minutes in both games. Yeah, I'd be a little bit worried. I probably wouldn't put eight Nuri on my free hit, for example. But if you've got him, I'd maybe I'd maybe keep him. Are you a hundred percent not gonna free hit? I'm definitely not gonna free hit because uh I don't have I don't have um my free hit, <laughs> basically. Some in the comments were threatening to unfollow you because of someone else's phone and tweet. I oh, know. I lost a lot of sleep that week this weekend hearing that. Thoughts on going Watkins over Haaland. I'd rather have Haaland personally. Watkins has made us look stupid again, those of us that sold him. How, I couldn't believe it. The thing is, up until Aston Villa played really well in the second half, and obviously they did hit the, wood, the woodwork a couple of times, but up until that Bailey goal, I think Arsenal had only given up like 0.4 XG or something like that. And then Bailey scores, and then Watkins goes and scores straight away afterwards. It's just... It was bad. Bad for Arsenal. Uh, is Tony a sell now? Yeah, I was surprised about that, that he played no minutes. But I think Thomas Frank said he hopes he'll be back next week. Uh, Nip, come a new member. Thank you very much. Uh, dead ending 34. Should I go Trent or Van Dyke? I think Van Dyke's the safe pick, but I'm tempted by... Um, I'm tempted by Trent. I'm going to wait and see what happens in Europe this week. Garnacho minutes versus Sheffield United will be interesting. Yeah, it'll be, it, be interesting to see whether... Ten Hag speaks about it. So for anyone that hasn't seen, it's not like a major thing, but there was a couple of tweets that Mark Goldbridge put up about why was Garnacho subbed off, and then something about something about Ten Hag kind of blaming Garnacho at the end of the game, and Garnacho liked both of those tweets. It'd just be interesting to see whether he takes any action on that. Wouldn't be the first time. Uh, did I play FPL Challenge this week? I did, but I can't remember what I did now. I forgot to. You know, there's a player on my bench didn't even play. I had Foden in my 11. We got to change it afterwards. Am I 100% not going to bench boost? Uh, no, not 100%. Is now the best time to play my triple captain on Salah? That depends when you're using chips in other game weeks, but possibly, yeah. I think Salah this week is probably one of the better options left. Wayne Rooney playing pro clubs with streamers on Twitch right now. Oh, nice. Don't, don't go and watch that, though. No, stay here with me. Is it worth playing Foden in 34 or try to bring in a double game week player? I, I think it depends how many free transfers you've got. I would I would switch Foden to a double game week with a free transfer. Would I take a hit? Not necessarily. Yeah, that, that's 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 why I think Garnacho might miss a game or two because Ten Hag has got previous, right? The, the Sancho thing's probably a little bit different. And part of the reason Sancho was kind of punished like he was because he didn't apologize right and now we don't know what went on behind the team uh behind the scenes for sure but the the, the good thing for Garnacho owners is the fa cup games first so maybe he'll make an example of him in that and then play him in 34 because Garnacho has been one of the best players for man united 
So we'll see. It depends. Um, it depends. They might just put it to bed this week. The one thing with Ten Hag is if he gets asked about it, he's quite open. And so if he says something like, we've dealt with it internally, then I think there's a better chance of him being back. I think Ten Hag has to go, though, by the way. He's got to go. Terrible again against Bournemouth. There is no process there. There's no, there's nothing to get excited about at all. By the way, who was it that um someone's just mentioned Jose Sar reminded me who who was it that said that I should get Jose Sar to play ahead of Neto this week? Definitely should have done that. Even though they conceded twice, he got eight points, eight points because of the assist. He got one assist and two bonus. Imagine if I bought in Jose Sar instead of Henderson and played him this week instead of Neto. Eight points up. I don't think Ten Hag will get sacked this season. I think they'll sack him in the summer. A minus four is a minus two this week. Uh, nope. <laughs> Even though Man United are bad, Bruno is almost a lock on wildcard 35. Yes, absolutely. I'll definitely have Fernandez. I'll probably also go for one or two Spurs defenders, even though that looks absolutely stupid right now. Man United players over doublers for 34 if free hitting. I, I wouldn't. I don't think I would. Is he's at the most complete forward in the league? I think some people would probably say that, yeah. I don't think it would be too far off. Would I get Hoyland in game week 35? Probably not. Would I get Mateta or Cunha as my third striker? That one I'm not completely sure about. I think I'll go Mateta just because of the fixtures. I mean, it doesn't feel... It feels kind of funny saying it now, but obviously Cunha's got to play against Arsenal. And Arsenal defence is usually pretty good. And I'm not sure how much we should let, let today affect our thoughts on that defence. Because for a large part of that game, they weren't troubled. It's going to be, if they lose to Bayern as well, it's going to be a massive, like, kind of double blow. That they, they're not, they can still win the lead, but it, it, you could just see at the end of the game, they knew. They knew what that meant. Because Arteta said in, the, in his interview afterwards, something like, you know, if one game, if we think that one game has kind of stopped everything, then we don't deserve to win it, something like that. But the players knew. You could tell at the end. And you just don't know how that will then affect him in the next game. Obviously, it's like we said earlier, it's still mathematically possible they could win the league, right? It just takes one slip-up from Man City. So I would still back the Arsenal defence. I, I can't remember what the question was now. Oh, yeah, Cunha or Mateta. I think I'd go Mateta, essentially. Although, Newcastle have got back-to-back -back clean sheets now. Maybe they're a good defensive side. They, they actually did defend really well against Spurs. They were very well organised. And Spurs found it quite difficult to break them down. Also, side note, Son was very bad again. That's three games in a row now. He's not looked good at all. And I've definitely come round to the fact that when Richarlison is fit, he's going to come back in. I think, he, I think he has to. I think he has to play through the middle so Son can play on the left. And you just take Werner out. Like Brennan Johnson was all right again. Werner, I mean, Son, were, Son, and, he, Son and Richarlison would be better than Werner and Son. That's for sure. I think I think Richardson will come in if he can get fit. I'm definitely going to have Son on on wildcard 35. Though. They've got two extra fixtures. He's nailed on penalty. He's got to have him. But it was a fr it was frustrating. Punished by selling Foden instead of Son. I was always going to sell Foden instead, and I, and I don't regret it. But obviously, in hindsight, it was a terrible move. And even though I, I was just happy Foden didn't play yesterday, because that that would have been more punishment, I'm sure. Even though you know, Man City did score a lot in the end, but it took a, it took a while for them to get going. Uh, Lise is an option, yeah. I think he got 68 minutes today. I'd be pretty... I think he definitely gets one start in the double. Probably two, I reckon. Would I go Jackson or Watkins, game week 35? Uh, I, will go Nicola, I will go Nicholas Jackson, and I'll probably regret it. And, <laughs> and by game week 37, I'll be saying, mm, yeah, I should have just gone for Ollie Watkins, shouldn't I? So obvious. Kelleher, Ariola, owner, wildcard 35. Thoughts? Sell for a double game week player this week. Even for a hit, I would do that. Easy decision.
Watkins for player of the season, none of this... Watkins won't get it, but Watkins has been very good. He's close to 20 goals without any penalties. He's been, he's been excellent. But I don't, I don't think he'll get it. I think if City win the league, Rodri will get it. Maybe Foden. If Arsenal win the league, it'll probably be... I mean, it could be any one of a number of players from Arsenal. Although they, they'll decide it before the league is over, right? Watkins, golden boot charge? Possibly. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I'm probably not too far off going for some single game week players on wildcard because it feels like all the options... Like Poro, for example, he's, got, he's apparently got an injury. It could be a hamstring injury. So he might be another player that's not an option for 35 now. Given double points, how much Sheffield United on FPL challenge? I'll probably go for a few. Three or four, maybe. But other teams, other teams are going to get double points as well, though, right? It's not just that, not just them. I haven't really, I, I don't give FPL Challenge a huge amount of thought, to be honest with you. I just tend to make my make, make, make my team on a Saturday. Darwin and Pickford or Cunha and Allison, uh, Cunha and Allison probably. Yeah, Udo, Udo, Udoggy would be the obvious one instead of Poro. What do you think about buying Isaac instead of double game week attackers if you have no wild card and will free hit 37? That's a tricky one. I, I would probably buy Isaac still, even though you're going to free hit him in 37. Because for double game week 34 now, you're looking at what? Like Darwin, Cunha, Mateta, players like that? I don't, I don't think you necessarily want them long term, so I think I'd rather just buy Isaac. Double arsenal defense or double attack on free hit. I still like double defense. I mean, here's the question to ask yourself. If you don't if you go for one Arsenal defender and you go for one Liverpool defender, which I guess is what a lot of people would do, how how happy are you about that third defender? Like a Crystal Palace defense like, you know, Minos from Palace, Aint Yuri Kilman from Wolves, Mikelenko, Tarkovsky, whoever it might be from Everton, how happy are you with that player? If you're happy enough, then yeah, go double Arsenal def uh, attack. It's a bit of a differential. I feel like filling the midfield spots with players from other t like, For example, I'd rather have Saliba and Eze than Munoz and Havertz, I think. But if you want to go the differential route, you should go the Palace defender and, and Havertz option. Yeah, if Ain't Nuri's fit, though, and I think right now I wouldn't put him on free hit 34. Sheffield United defender would not be anywhere near the list of options for me, despite having Burnley. Regulon eight pointer, yeah, did really well. I mean, if Gabriel was out this week, which doesn't look like it was ever a thing, but imagine if he had been, I might have even bought Regulon. I probably would have gone for Rico Lewis, I reckon, but I might have bought Regulon. Your team looks good for bench boost 34. Is it worth to wait until 37? I think it's okay for bench boost, my team. Neto, Zabani, Palmer, Doughty. It's not terrible. I think I need to do some thinking this week, but really it will just depend on how happy I am with the wildcard 35 team and what the bench will look like. Because I can get... I can get four double game week players in 37. It's just how much, how bad will my team look outside of those weeks? Because if I don't bench boost in 37, I can keep more players from Arsenal and stuff like that. So, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one. Keep or sell eight Nuri. Probably just keep him. Not on free hit this week and only one free transfer. The Bravka to Raya for double Arsenal defense or Foden to a doubler like Eze. I, I think I'd. Probably Raya for me, rather than because you want Foden later on. If you haven't got any other chips or anything, you just want you probably want to keep Foden. As defenders have been poor overall this season, do you see a drop in price for the top rated defenders? No, not really. I mean, maybe Trent comes back down to seven point five, maybe Trippier goes to six, but they they shouldn't do really. If anything, they should probably put defender prices up a little bit, maybe. Just make it a little bit harder overall. Like Sleeper and Gabrielle should have a massive increase. They should be they should be the same price, price as Van Dijk is right now. The new number one overall in the world has had a great start to this game with Harlan, Captain Gordon, and Vardy. Oh, very nice. 
feel like Nunez is getting benched. Yeah, probably miss one game. Would you use free hit if you have nine double game week players? Probably not. Should I go Van Dijk and Eze or Trent and Lise for the double? Van Dijk and Eze is probably safer. Trent and Lise is a bit more fun, maybe. If they play twice. Will they both play twice? There's, there's definitely some doubts there. Uh, Palmer Price, 8 million, maybe. Tony out for a hit. I'd wait and see what Thomas Frank says. I suspect he might be fine, although I thought that last week as well. I did say, though, on final thoughts, so, uh, because Thomas Frank said everyone that was available last week is available, and I said in final thoughts, does that, I think that, I, presumably that includes Tony. He only played nine minutes against Villa. So we'll have to see what Thomas Frank says this week, but I think he'll be okay. Watkins price, maybe like De Bruyne, I doubt it. FPL are rubbish at prices. I suspect Watkins will be 9 million, something like that, even though it should probably be more. Robertson in. Will, will Robertson get two starts in the double? Maybe. He was quite good today in the first half. Will Robertson get more minutes than Trent? Possibly. I mean, Van Dyke's the only safe one. When is a good time to free hit if not now? I have the bench boost as well. Uh, now or 37 probably. If, if you don't need it for either of those weeks though, just use it in a random week like 38. Why Trent over Robertson? He's much more attacking usually. Which defender would you buy this week? Free hit 37. Arsenal? If Liverpool go out of Europe, I think Trent and Robert will play both in the double. Yeah, that, that's a good point, actually. European matches are going to have a big sway on thoughts going forward. Like, it, it's possible that Arsenal and Liverpool both go out this week of Europe. Because, I mean, Arsenal have got to go to Bayern. That's not going to be easy. And obviously, Liverpool are 3 0 down. So they could both be out going for the league. They're just going to play. You'd imagine then, like, Trent and Robert would just play every minute but it's still going to come down to fitness like if you're not fit enough to play both games and you're not close to being able to push through because there's a league on the line they could still get benched it's possible gonna use bench shoes this week good luck assuming they're all fit who would you start between eight Yuri Saliba or Haaland for game week 34 probably Sarabia Sarabia, then Aint Nuri, then Haaland, probably. Don't forget City can also go out. Yeah, but I think that's less likely, to be honest. I mean, Real Madrid did cause Man City some problems, but one of the goals is a deflected shot. One probably should have been stopped, the one from Rodrigo. And also Man City are at home. That's the big difference. Arsenal have got to go away to Bayern and get a result. And Liverpool are 3-0 down. So, yeah, of course, anyone can still go out. But I think City at home, I think they'll beat Real Madrid, to be honest. But you never know. They've got, they've got players that can hurt them. Vinicius, Rodrigo, etc. Would you go for three Arsenal defenders on free hit 34? Probably not. You could do, but I don't know if I'd go that far. I, I'd, I, I, I quite like a lot of the Arsenal attackers, to be honest. Trent looked decent today. I thought he looked all right for a player just back from injury. I don't think he looked particularly anything special. But he's got to build up his fitness, right? Don't forget Rafinha. Yeah, but he plays for Barcelona. Would you play Palmer or Zabani in 34? I'd probably play Zabani. This free hit's way more interesting than free hit 29. A little bit, yeah. But it's also been quite easy to build to for those without free hit. And the, and the difference is, we ha I feel like having Arsenal and Liverpool players in previous weeks is not as bad as having like Villa players and stuff before 29. You can sell Doughty for 8 Nuri, Son for Ezier and go bench boost 34. Yeah, but then I've got Bradley who's probably going to be injured.
I think a couple of things that have happened though recently have helped free hit 34. Like Darwin now, you know, Jota being back means that Darwin is probably a little bit more of a risk. Trent being back is obviously a nice differential. Elise and Eze being fit, that's also nice. Like people haven't like, you know, I've got Sarabia, and I, I I think Sarabia is a perfectly good pick, but you know, if I was buying this week and I was trying to bring in a cheap midfielder to fund another move, would I bring in Sarabia or would I bring in Elise? I'd probably go Elise. So I think free hit 34 has had a couple of wins last last couple of weeks. And obviously, for those of us not free hitting this week, we've, we've been trying to build this team for weeks now. So you're trying to build a team with a bit of time to go. It's never going to last the whole way through. So I think, um, yeah, I think free hit 34 is looking a bit better than it was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, Liverpool weren't that bad. They deserved to score today, yeah, for sure. But for the league and stuff, it just doesn't matter, does it? It's, it's it's irrelevant. You didn't score. Like, Darwin, Jota, and Salah all had chances that should have gone in. If you had to bring one, who would you bring in, Saka or Salah? Definitely Salah. Yeah, Newcastle play is definitely another big win for free hit 34. Disregarding game weeks 34 and 37, who would you keep out of Salah and Haaland? Haaland, probably. We still getting uh, Spurs defenders for wildcard 35? Uh, I am, at least. I bought in Foden from the leap, but had Cunha first bench. Oh, nice. Eze or Elise? Eze, Luis Diaz or Jota, Luis Diaz. I don't, I don't think you can buy Jota, honestly. Maybe you put him on free hit if you want to like just go for that differential. But I don't think Jota's worth buying just yet. Spurs are bound. Spurs are just bound to concede two goals or more in double game week 35. You're pretty much still going to go for a defender, though. I might even have two Spurs defensive assets in 35. I might have Vicario and Udogi. Or Poro if he's fit. Diaz or Habits. Habits could be at risk of minutes, but I doubt it. I think I would rather have Diaz. And Havertz, but there's not a huge amount in it. I feel like this is quite a low scoring season, in FPL. I think I had more points in game week 33 last year with a way worse rank. Possibly. I haven't double checked, to be honest. Triple Spurs and Triple Chelsea, Wildcard 35. Which ones? Depends on the. I mean, Poro, Son, Palmer, and Gusto will probably be four, and then you're picking two more. Jackson. Potentially Petrovic, uh, Vicario, Richarlison, maybe if he's back fit. Madison. I still don't mind Madison, but I, I just don't think I'm going to have space in midfield for him. No free hit, wildcard 35. Kelleher, Ain't Nuri, Sons, Allison, Van Dyke, Eze, minus four. Yeah, I quite like that, to be honest. I don't. You don't necessarily need to upgrade Ain't Nuri, though. Wait to see what Gary O'Neill says. Or Kelleher, Son to Alisson Diaz and play Nuriel Zabani. Yeah, I kind of like the second one. I don't think you need the hit. We need Real Madrid to win. I can't have City back-to-back -back trebles. And I tweeted this earlier, and predictably everyone was like, yeah, it's not done yet. I realise that. It's obviously not done. It's still a long way to go for City to get another treble. But I do think it's quite scary how close it is. And by close, right? obviously, first of all, you've got to win a treble to even be in the position to do back-to-back -back trebles. And they're not that far away from it. Obviously, they still have three trophies to win. Nothing is completely done. But they are favourites for the FA Cup. You know, People will say, well, Chelsea could beat them. Well, yeah, of course they could. But Man City are favourites. And I think most people expect Man City to now win the league. So Europe is the big, is the big trophy to get, that, to get that treble. And it's close. It's close enough. Right? I think they'll beat Real Madrid. At home, they'll go through, and then what? It's three more games: Bayern Munich or Arsenal. Man City will be favourites. 
And whoever gets through to the final from th that side of the draw will be favourites in the final as well. So it's obviously not close as in they're just one win away from it. But I think it's, I think it's scarily close. Hope, I hope Man United can beat Coventry and then somehow beat Man City in the final, but I just don't see it. Just do not see it. Thoughts on going Regulon over a double game with Defender? I don't see why anyone would do that, to be honest. Not just for Treble, they already won the Super Cup and Club World. Yeah, I know, but it's not... I mean, that's great, but that's... the Back to back travel will be FA Cup, Champions League, Premier League. That's the one. Ones. Bayer Leverkusen winning the Bundesliga in style today, 5-0. Harry Kane just cannot win a trophy. Who knows? Maybe he'll get the Champions League. I still think I, Kane will walk away with a trophy this season. It'll just be an international one. Oh, come on, Man United. Well, Man United might not beat Coventry. I, I don't know much about Coventry, but I would suspect I'd be right in saying they're probably better organised than Man United are. I bet they've got less gaps in their midfield. Chelsea could be... Yeah, okay. again, like, I know these things could happen. Right? I'm not saying it's done. I'm not saying that Man City have definitely won the treble. I'm just saying it's scarily close. Yes, Chelsea could beat Man City. Man City could get through to the final. They could lose the final. They could slip up in the Premier League. It can happen, but it's still scarily close, in my opinion. But look, I could be sat here this time next week and City have been knocked out by Real Madrid and then, you know, it's all over. I didn't say it was done at all. Your five penalty takers for England. <laughs> I have Tony Palmer, Kane, Maguire. I mean, Saka's scored quite a few recently. I think Saka would be a, a bet, in a better place now to take one than he was in the Euros. I think the league is probably done. The treble certainly isn't. It's close. Um, Harland or Darwin for 34. I, I'd go Darwin, I think. I'd risk the minutes. No, we can't, we can't have back-to-back -back trouble. Someone has to beat them. Someone has to beat them. Come on, Harry Kane. A free hit video tomorrow, probably, yeah. Leverkusen still undefeated this season. They won the German Cup. If they win the Europa, is it reasonable to call it the biggest achievement in football to date? I'd have to have a think about that. I'm not sure if that's the biggest achievement. I mean, Leicester winning... Is it is Leverkusen winning the Bundesliga bigger than Leicester winning the Premier League? Not sure it is. Maybe it is. German fans tell me. I mean, it'd be, it, it, it's got to be right up there, though, if they go unbeaten the whole season. Yeah, Le Leicester winning the Premier League. I, I, that, I don't think that will be topped for a very, very long time. But yeah, it, all three, if they win all three competitions and go undefeated, that's, that's a pretty ridiculous achievement. We'll see. We'll see. Either way, it's, it's great that Bayern haven't won it, right? Who's the best differential captain for 34? Well, Salah's going to be the highest captain, so... Saka, probably next best, I would say. And then you're looking at like the likes of Eze, Elise, if you want to go really different. Chelsea winning the Champions League in 2020. I don't... I mean, you, you're going to have to give me a bit more than that. I don't think that was anywhere near what we're talking about here in terms of ridiculous achievements. Minus four this week to get Gabriel or just play Zabani. I'd probably just play Zabani. Yeah, tr yeah, true. It probably is going to be a bit biased because we're all Premier League fans here. Uh, Bradley, Bradley seems to be injured. Well, he is injured. He went off. Um, probably going to be out for the double, I think. Any chance of early moves? For me, no chance. No, what, what would be the point? I'm selling Son either way, so I'm going to lose money on him. And that money's going to... I can go for any defender. By the time I get Eze, I can go for any defender I want. I just don't need to go early. Much better getting the European information, injuries, press conference updates. 
Like I'm dead ending into 34. There's no long term moves now, just this week only. So that there's no reason to go early. Vardy scoring 11 goals in a row beats Leverkusen. Come on now, let's not let's not get too silly here. Surely everyone will have Isaac soon. By by game week 35, a lot will have him. Yeah. I will. Son will be a lock on my wild card in 35. As long as he's fit, he'll definitely be in. Eze or Diaz for 34? I'm tempted to say Eze. The thing is with Liverpool, look, we don't want to overreact too much to what happened today, but I think Jota will get a start in the double. And I think we all presume it's going to be for Darwin. That that is probably most likely. I think Diaz is more likely to start twice than than Darwin. But it's not a guarantee. Whereas I think with Eze it is. Uh, what happened with Bradley? I think he twisted his ankle. It was actually from him tackling someone else. He actually gave away a free kick, I believe. Uh, Ten Hag didn't say anything about Garnacho. Garnacho basically just liked a couple of tweets, so we have to wait and see. Salah was quiet today, but he had no service. I mean, Salah, part of Salah's game is to provide service as well, though. I, I just don't think Salah was very good today. It's not, it's not like he was the only one. Like Most of that Liverpool team just weren't very good today. I think Robertson was very good in the first half. Second half? Trying to think whether anyone was that good. Not really. Why is Diaz more likely to start twice than Darwin? As a Liverpool fan, I disagree. Diaz has been terrible lately, but everyone hones in on... I, I do think that people... I, I think when Darwin does badly, he gets a lot more stick than when anyone else does badly. It could be one start each. But then who's starting twice? That means you're thinking that Jota starts twice. Which is not going to happen, right? I don't think. I think one of Diaz or Darwin is starting twice. I just think Diaz is probably a little bit more likely. Jot through the middle and Diaz on the left. I still have wildcard, triple captain, bench boost. How would you use them? Probably triple captain this week, wildcard 35, bench boost 37. Most likely. Arteta hypnotized everyone. He's reached only one final in five years and 750 million spent and bottled two leagues in the top four. Imagine if we stuck with Emery. Come on. You never wanted to start. Uh, either that's just a troll post. That sounds like one of those bot replies on Twitter. You know, you know those, those random Twitter accounts that just reply the same thing to everyone. It sounds a bit like that. Who wins, Bayern or Arsenal? I think Bayern. I think Arsenal need a, a lead. Like. Look, I don't watch the Bundesliga. I'm not going to pretend that I've watched a lot of Bayern, but given what's happened in the league, maybe they can be gotten at by Arsenal. Like Arsenal are good enough, but you go away, not a huge amount of experience in that team in the Champions League, right? Not for games like this. Away to Bayern, I think it's difficult. I think Bayern win. I think Bayern win. I, could, I mean, it could be that Arsenal go over there absolutely dominate. They've got it in them. I just don't think it happens. Is Triple United and Wildcard 35 too crazy? I'm I'm pretty sure I'm going Triple Man United and Wildcard 35. I'm getting at least two. The thing with Man United is Ten Hag won't rotate. He just, he just doesn't really rotate players. Not not the main ones anyway. So like Anana and Fernandez and Dallo, for example, could be pretty good. You've been an Arsenal fan for 15 years. You've never seen a worse manager than Arteta. Come on. It's a bit, it's very reactionary. Mine have been about as good as they usually are. Just Leverkusen are ridiculous. Yeah, I, I think Bayern will go through, but I'm not, I, I'm not going to, you know me, right? I won't pretend to know anything that I don't know. And I, I, I couldn't tell you much about Bayern from this season at all. It's more it's just more Arsenal having to go away. And also this I feel like 
whenever I watch Champions League games and stuff like that, German stadiums always sound maybe not, but maybe not actually. I mean, I'm sure if you go to like, I don't know, somewhere else is probably more, but I feel like German crowds and stadiums they just sound intimidating. There's big atmosphere in Germany, and like that that can get to players. I'm mean, I'm sure there's other stadiums that are just as just like that, but I feel like Germany right up there. Uh, will the Premier League get the fifth Champions League spot? I, I don't know, but I think the chances of that go down the more teams that go out. Hoyland's a nice option too, but I, I just don't think he'll make the the best three picks to be honest. The German fan bases go hard for atmosphere. Pepsi or Coke? Uh, Coke Zero. It's because they can drink beer during matches. Maybe there's some truth in that. We must remember that Liverpool's game week 35 is less than three days after game week 34 ends. Darwin Diaz may start against West Ham and then once in the double, very likely in my opinion. No, well, I get that, but then who else is going to start left and left wing and up front? By the way, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you that Darwin and Diaz might only start once, but I think it'll only be one of them because I'm not I don't think Diaz, I don't think Jota gets two starts. All right, so well, I, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think Jota gets two starts. Jackson will probably be on my wild card, yeah, if he if he avoids a yellow card in thirty four. It's against Arsenal though, it's going to be tough. For, oh yeah, I always get this asked this question every year. First FPL season, so I've no idea what do FPL creators do between seasons. Have some time off. That's what I do. Um, literally five, five weeks a day. By the way, the season is over. This time, this time in five weeks, we'll have our final overall rank. We'll know who's won the league. All that, all that good stuff. Um, and yeah, I'll be off until FPL comes back up again, and then we go all over again. I think um, there's just no point in doing videos. People just don't watch them. I might I might do like one or two kind of review style videos, but then that'll be it. I I don't even think I'm going to do Euro fantasy this year. To be honest, I, I did I did the World Cup last time. It didn't really people weren't really that interested. I'm not I'm not sure I'm going to do Euro fantasy. And also I'm going to be away. For a couple of maybe one or two of the games, so I probably won't be able to make the deadlines. Do I work outside of creating FPL content? No. In a word, <laughs> can see Mac playing the six more wheels are coming off Endo. Endo wasn't great today, yeah, but I think he's been all right generally, hasn't he? Not a great look to get hooked when he did today, though. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll give it to you that. I completely forgot about Gakpo. He's been improved off the bench of late. In my opinion, Gakpo and Darwin versus Fulham, Diaz and Jota versus Everton, Diaz and Darwin versus West Ham. It could be, yeah. You could be right. A pundit on match of the day for the Euros. Uh, no. I don't think I'll be asked to do that. You need to do post-England game knee-jerk strings. They would be very popular. I thought about that, but... I don't think I'm going to get to do them um, post games. Sorry, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that for all of them. I, as I said on the deadline stream, I am going to bring back my football channel. I'm working on just some stuff that I can, so I can make videos on it, which should actually be pretty soon, maybe even this week. Which midfielders under 8.5 would you buy if you were free hit 37? Uh, Anthony Gordon, I would look at. Bruno Fernandes, I would look at. Probably those two off the top of my head. Um, I don't know how much Foden is, but he could be an option too. Just for the one game when they get sent home. Come on, England are getting out of the groups. Will I be doing any vlogs through the summer? Probably not. Don't think my, I don't think people want to see that from me. 
don't think it'll be that interesting. Looking forward to seeing you on the official FPL show. I don't know if I'll be on again before the end of the season. I'll have to wait and see. Not after my mistake in the last one. Is Eze a much better option than Cunha? My mind thinks so, but I feel like I'm underestimating Cunha. Cunha makes the rest of my team better as opposed to Eze. I think I would rather have Eze than Cunha in 34, and part of that is because I'm pretty sure he's first choice penalty take for Palace, whereas I'm not sure Cunha is. And also, Eze doesn't have to play Arsenal, and I would still back that Arsenal defence. But Wolves are at home, and they will cause problems for Arsenal. So I think it's quite close. I'd just about go Eze. Plus, he's a midfielder as well, which helps. Robertson and Trent on free hit. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. There's obviously a bit of risk there, I guess. But like Trent and Robertson and then double Arsenal attack could work. Uh, the mistake in the FPL show was uh, so, the producer spoke in my ear to say something like, um, you can answer a bit longer on this question or something like that. Because sometimes you get told to, to make your answers quick because they're running out of time. Obviously, like it's not like YouTube. You don't, you don't just wing it like I am right now. Um, it's live. So they've got you know, deadlines to stick to or whatever to, to get to adverts, whatever it might be. So sometimes they were just saying, Yuri, can you make this question a bit quicker or this answer a bit quicker? And I think he said you can make it longer. And I said, I didn't quite hear you. And that came out on the show because I wasn't muted. No, it's not pre-recorded, it's live. It, like it doesn't go out live in England, but it's recorded live. What's my best transfer of the season so far? I mean, the first one that springs to mind is getting Saliba in game week 12 after I didn't wildcard him in. That was a pretty good one. I'm not sure. I mean, someone else will probably... Th I mean, Palmer on wildcard 10 was great. 4.9 million. Getting Bruno Fernandes for his 11-pointer before free hit 29 was nice. I can't think of too many where I've been like massively ahead of the game or anything like that. I mean, Zabani for, for game week 28 getting that goal was amazing. Saliba at game week one deadline. Yeah, fair enough. I try not to bring that up, though. Richardson was good, yeah. Getting, yeah, Watkins. All I've done is sell Watkins, and it's never gone well. Even this time, Watkins missed the game. He's played Man City away. Sorry, he didn't play Man City away. He missed that one. He's played Arsenal away. He's still beating Darwin. Honestly, this, I think that's the third time this season I've sold Watkins for Darwin. It's never gone well. Do we have to use our free transfer for game week 34 before doing our free hit? No, because as soon as you free hit, it just wipes out whatever transfer. You don't you don't get a transfer in when you free hit, basically. You have if you free hit in 34, your team in 35 will be the exact same one you just finished 33 with. And you're still going Jackson over Watkins. Yep. Almost certainly. Then we just hope for the best. Uh, double Arsenal midfield versus double Liverpool midfield on free hit. I think I prefer double Arsenal. It just depends whether you're happy with not having double Arsenal defence. I think it's okay not to go there. What what do we, what do you think Trent's minutes will be for the double? One th one thirty, one forty, maybe. I think he gets one start definitely. Just whether he gets that second one. How do price changes affect free hit? They, same as they affect your own team, right? If you don't put, I don't know, Trent in your free hit today and he goes up overnight, then it'll cost you an extra 0 0.1 next, uh, tomorrow to put him in, basically. I don't think you're going to get stuck for... Yeah, I don't think you're going to get stuck for money on free hit 34. Maybe it could be... It might be quite close if you want Harlan and Salah, I guess. I think Trent starts versus Atalanta. Yeah, that would worry me a bit then for for the double. I, I almost want to see him on the bench and just get minutes off the bench. I think, I don't know, Bradley out obviously helps. Like one thing for sure, if you go for Trent, there's a risk there. You have you just have to accept that. I didn't watch the West Ham game. No, it was on the same time as Liverpool. And it wasn't on TV.
All right, let's see if there's any other questions. Excuse me, we haven't answered already, which we probably have at this point. And I'll probably cover them all again this week. No, we cannot watch all games on TV in the UK. Although I don't live in the UK, but we still can't watch them all in Ireland. Thoughts on no Salah for free hit 34. Gapo and Jota attempting differentials. I just, I just don't see the point in that at all. Salah will almost certainly start twice. Those two probably won't. I know Salah hasn't been great, but we're not at the point where Gapo or Jota are worth it over him, in my opinion. I don't know if anyone saw, but Klopp said after the game that Trent isn't ready to play 120 minutes yet. It doesn't surprise me because maybe I should be a lot less positive on Trent, to be honest, because Klopp said after the game in Europe last week that Trent was nowhere near playing, basically. There's no way he they wanted him to play a half today. Uh, who, am I, who would my free hit 34 locks be? Um, Probably Saka, Salah. I, I'd probably go Henderson because just because I probably wouldn't have space for Allison or, or Raya, and I think Henderson's the next best option. An Arsenal defender, probably Van Dijk. Solanke, maybe, although I've not given forwards much thought, to be honest. Something like that. Eze would probably be a lock as well. Free hit 34 and forgot to use my two free transfers was getting Isaac in. Ouch. Big Ben Brereton. Have I pronounced that wrong? Should really learn his name for this week properly. Get it absolutely correct. How many double doublers are realistically better than single game week picks that have good fixtures like Watkins, Bruno, Isaac? I'm telling you now, if I was free hitting this week, I would have 11 double game weekers. I would ignore Watkins, Bruno, and Isaac. So how many doublers are better than singlers? I'd say at least 11. Well, I think I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed that, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button, rate five stars if you listen on podcast as well. Uh, I will be back tomorrow with a free hit video. Then we'll do transfer tips, game week preview, team selection, final thoughts, deadline stream on Saturday. The deadline this week is a little bit later. It's 1.30. There's no 12.30 game. Um... So yeah, just keep that in mind. We're doing a deadline stream that day anyway. But for now, I'm done. Like I said, plenty of videos this week to answer any other questions and go into a bit more detail maybe. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday and I will catch you again tomorrow.